Hello and welcome back to episode 21 of Down Under the Ring podcast. I am your host, The Warship, and I'm joined as always by Fid Awesome. Today, we are going to be talking about that promo, the CM Punk return to Raw. We're going to also be talking about that other promo, Seth's promo, this week, talking about the AEW backstage drama. Maybe, maybe not. We're also going to address Austin V. Punk. The dream match. Can it actually happen? And finally, we're going to go through some AEW stuff as well. Going back to their roots, leaning away from your big shows and your Ric Flairs. Fid, how are you today? Good, man. What a week. This week has been, like, since we last spoke, it's been good for business. Punk's good for business, bro. I've been saying it for weeks. You know, we've been yeah. talking about the collision problems and what the real cause, the root issue was. And I think it's fair to say, after the impact, the ridiculous impact that we've gone through here, that, man, it's punk, right? A lot of it oh. is punk. But, I mean, like, just looking at our own results of the podcast, TikTok, Instagram, all of our content we've put out in the last week, like... Punk has been good for our business. All right, and Mr. Bloody TikTok superstar here, even though you <laughs> uploaded the same video as me, somehow gets like 400,000 views on all of your stuff. Who knows? But, but I mean, it, it, even on like your YouTube and yes. our podcast downloads and all that, it's just been ridiculous. Like, punk is good for business. I have to say, for those who aren't following the YouTube right now, that is youtube.com slash the warship, little bit of a cheap plug, bang, bang. Uh, that's going off at the moment i've found we've actually got our biggest views ever on a single podcast across our entire range so from yeah. spotify google play everything everywhere you listen to your podcast audio wise but we've also added like a hundred extra just on the youtube side of things as well and that's yeah. really good but like that's making a big difference there just overall because it means more people are seeing it not just that i've had a massive boost myself with all of the down under the ring content we've been putting through on the yeah. youtube as well so it's been really really cool i'm really happy to see it thank you so much for everyone who's got through and got around it it's been really awesome and and for those of you listening on the audio podcast like you have done for the last 20 episodes uh if you're wanting to see our beautiful faces you can this week uh because it's our first upload this week of us in person irl videos oh. look at our sexy faces oh. you can, if you're listening you can't see all this right now no no you can't hey audio listeners we love you to death but you can't see this 100%. you yeah. can't see this right now and it's sexy it's beautiful almost as beautiful as this week in pro wrestling oh uh, well, let, let's call it for it as like because we we did last week's episode uh, two days early. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we had to. Like, yeah, we, we had to. We had to get out uh, straight after Punk's uh, return on um, Survivor Series, and so we've literally got two episodes of Raw that have happened since the last podcast. So we've got so much to sort of cover. But no, we're going no, to no, 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 no. I'm done. All right. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with sitting here and saying, and then the people come to the ring and they had a wrestle. Oh. Exactly it. So while we have missed two episodes of Raw, we've also made a decision for how we're doing these shows moving forward. Not mm -hmm. only are you going to be able to see our beautiful, handsome faces every week now, but uh, we're not going to be covering beat for beat on every single thing that happened on each show anymore. Yeah. Um, what we are going to do is we're switching it up a bit, we're changing the format of the show, and we're going to be covering the things that we are interested in. I think it's just going to make, if we're enjoying it more, hopefully you're enjoying it more, right? Well, one thing that we've noticed uh, because of your feedback, or both from a actual feedback point of view, mm. as well as a general viewership point of view, is you guys actually prefer it when we talk about stuff that we're engaged in. My rants early on, uh, the, all of the stuff where we're passionate about it, like Fid, when yeah. you were doing your AEW stuff, when you were super passionate about AEW, the big one, obviously, the CM Punk thing. We think yeah. that, yes, we will cover the week of wrestling. Yes, don't get us wrong. Yes. We will still talk about the week of wrestling because most of it connects. You know, There are elements that connects to it anyway, but I'm not going to be here saying, and then Nia Jax wrestled Shayna Baszler and it was garbage because it's a Nia Jax match because you guys don't want to see that no more 
Like, nah. it, it, and I don't They're like not. doing it. Honestly, I don't. And I don't like sitting there and saying, "Well, shit, we've got like four hours worth of content that we have to firstly watch at, at a minimum." You know. Mm. Even without the AEW additional stuff, it's more. It's so much more. I don't even know why I said for. It feels like it is like 50 hours of TV congested into less than an exactly. hour here. And that just and doesn't th- make sense. The thing is, as well, is there's so many other channels out there doing that. If that's what you're into, go check them out. And then you come back to us for our rants. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Go on, go listen to the boys. Go listen to any of the people we speak about regularly. And yeah. until we have ourselves a producer, until <laughs> you know you become Dave LaGreca and I become Bully Ray, there's no reason for us to be covering three, four episodes a week. I'd love to do that low key. Oh. If you all support it like mad and it becomes the thing we do all the time, sign me up. 100%. But it's unreasonable for us to go through all of the content in one hit. It's boring. I don't think you need it. I think you've already got it, you know. Yeah. I go to WrestleZone. I go to PW Down Under. <laughs> I go mostly to, like, you know, either websites or podcasts to listen to that yeah. stuff already. I you mean, know, and, I don't the, need the rest. And the likes of Fightful do a live stream after every episode and go over what's just happened. Go see them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. It's just not... We don't need to be doing that. And um, moving forward, we want to make sure that we give you guys the best so that's what we're here for and talking Um, about the best why don't we start talking about the best in the world it's clobbering time all right now this is a super divisive promo yeah it has caused a lot of derision that's a word i'm sure that's a word it has been um (coughs) it has been probably oh man it's been the most talked about thing this week for sure for me Obviously, Sam Punk, he comes out on Raw at the very end of the show, which I think was a miss- misstep, i got to say. I think him coming out at the end of the show was not the right way to do it. I don't know what you think about that. I, I, this is, I think from a TV production standpoint, it makes so much sense why they did it. Like, it's, mm-hmm. They knew that this was going to be a highly rated show, and they were 29% up on the previous week's Raw, <laughs> right? They knew mm. that eyeballs were going to be on this show for CM Punk. So it makes sense to keep people watching. Don't announce when he's going to. It's just CM Punk's going to be live with a microphone. We don't know what's going to happen. This guy, you know, is the most unpredictable wrestler in the world. Is going to be live. Yeah. And yeah. so they kept us guessing the entire episode. But the thing is, though, is going by the numbers, because, again, I'm going to reference them again because I've been mm. listening to them all week. Busted Open Radio talked about it. Mm. And in the first quarter... Like so, the start of the show, there was like two million concurrent viewers. Right, yeah. it was high. And Randy Orton comes out; it's awesome. It declined from there. It got down to like a one point seven. Right. Yeah. So by the time Punk comes out, we've got three hundred thousand people less watching. Yeah. Now, if they had have capitalised that, what I think, and I agree with the boys too, what I think happened is at the start of the show, everyone was like, "CM Punk, CM Punk, he's going to open the show." Oh, but he didn't. Oh, and the crowd I, I guess was, I'll watch it on YouTube. And the crowd for that episode was down. Yeah. Like, yeah. they were not a lively crowd. Um, and no. I wonder if it is because they were expecting that big pop at the start with CM Punk and because they yeah. knew they were going to... Uh, I would assume half an hour into the show, they would have been like, yeah, we're not getting Punk for another two and a half hours. Yeah, and look, that's exactly like there is exactly when they say, like me, when I watch a wrestling show that I'm interested in, kind of, is I'll go... All right, cool. I'll catch Punk's highlights. I'll watch the. I'll watch the YouTube. I'll get yeah. the rest of it there. And I think that you'll find that that three hundred thousand people, roughly, yeah. probably translated into three hundred thousand extra views on YouTube. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Which is great for them, but it sucks for the live audience. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's the content of this promo that really got people. And at first, I'm going to give my thing on this. At first, Please. I was definitely like this is a shit promo like this is the most pg punk i have seen in a long time uh he all this sort of thing and that's how i felt initially but you give it half uh, give me half an hour to an hour of stewing on it this was absolutely setting up punk for what we're going to expect from him moving forward Mm mm-hmm I think this yeah. is, we, I genuinely think we are going to see 
uh, heel punk. I think he is going to be like corporate sellout bad guy. Like I think he is going to lean into exactly what everyone's saying he is uh, behind the scenes. People are saying he's he, they would have known, right? Is that him going back to WWE is him being a hypocrite, it's him being a sellout, it's him only going for money, it's all this sort of thing. And I think this entire thing was setting up what we're going to see in the future. Now, that's interesting because for me, I'm of two minds right now. Obviously, I think the real big play is you capitalize on the return first. Yep. You push the face aspect of Punk. You know, he comes out, he kisses babies, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then at the right moment, you you flip the switch, you turn him heel, you get the big, big, big reaction because he's your hero, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but on the other hand, you know, Seth Rollins has been a real uh, just a real piece of shit yeah. <laughs> like like and the way that he's been talking he's been saying all the face things right yeah. don't get me wrong everything he's saying is face stuff but he's saying it like a like a massive heel like yeah. like like you know, you know the way that he's speaking is really aggressive um he's he's really playing into this heel thing now seth has been a face for a while yeah and punk has been a face for a while yeah. both of them as heels go and Absolutely. i mean they're awesome as heels yeah the my, question my is CM who do you punk put run, there my favorite cm punk run is uh shredded society punk mm -hmm. yeah and it's the biggest no, heel run he's done in wwe so the question is is who do you give the ball like do you make it seth rollins big heel you know do you get rid of all this stuff and make him because like obviously the whoa, 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 all that stuff is really facey he's being a crazy joker guy yeah. is very funny and all that do you make him like triple h again do you turn him like heel as all hell do you put them in a position where seth will do anything anything to keep the belt anything or do you flip the script and go for the obvious answer in my eyes, which is to give us heel punk? Yeah, I, I genuinely think heel punk is the only way you can go because I think you can capitalize on the drama that he brings with him. And it looks like they may be leaning into that with Seth's promo that he cut on this week's Raw. My question, though, and this is an important question, do you think heel punk works when you have the sword of Damocles that is heel punk with Paul Heyman looming? Do you think it works better by himself, or do you think it works better if he goes for Roman and he becomes a heel that way? That's a very good question. I okay. This is the thing. I love Paul Heyman, but I never liked Paul Heyman with Punk back in the day. I don't think while I loved both of those two things separately, I didn't feel like it worked them together. I think Punk can speak for himself, yeah. but it is an undeniable element to the situation because oh. everyone's been talking about it, and it's right there. So do like the scenarios we have in front of us here before we get to seth's promos uh what do they do with punk now does he win the rumble i don't think he does no. i think he gets eliminated at the worst possible time i think he enters the rumble but i think he gets eliminated does he then win the chamber i don't know that either i don't think so there were two title opportunities in those two nights do you give him a position where he ends up going for the belt at WrestleMania exclusively, or do you pull the trigger early? Now, we've got a follower on our ex um, who has given a really interesting scenario that I sent you as well. Don't know if you want to give a shout-out there or not, Fid. Um, yeah, this is uh, Ryan Bidson. 
Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So from from Ryan Betson, who essentially said uh, it can't go true because we watched Raw this week, who essentially said that uh, Jay wins the belt on Raw, which obviously didn't happen, and then it ends up being Punk in the chamber. Uh, the Rumble, they both have nothing happen. It kind of is just a thing. Maybe they eliminate each other. Mm-hmm. We get to Chamber. Punk's in the match. Seth wins Chamber because Jay says, all right, Oos, I'm going to put the title up in the Elimination Chamber. Jay loses. Seth becomes champion, which leads to Seth versus Punk at WrestleMania for the title, which Punk then wins. That one there, you could run both of them. Either of them could be heel in that scenario. Oh, i tell you what. Here's the one that I came up with last week, and I'm gutted that they haven't done this. Is I reckon they should have had Punk turn up, and look, he could still do this, but Punk turn up with a red bag. Something's in the bag, and essentially he comes out and he's like, Seth, I'm still world champion. Yep. I didn't lose what's in this bag. You never yep. have to open the bag. Or reference it. You know, it's obviously a massive reference in itself, but he could be talking about anything yeah. for the casual fan. Yeah. I have... I didn't lose what's in this bag. You've got a world championship. Let's, um... What is it? Unite these two things. Yeah, yeah. Let's unify the yeah. championships. Oh, yeah, you know, he comes out and he says, you know what, you call me a piece of shit. You yeah. call me a scumbag because I went somewhere else and I made a bigger name for myself. I did exactly, I did exactly what I was told to do by a very wise man. And I left and I made a name for myself and I won what's in this bag. It is mine. Yeah. So let me use that as collateral. I will throw this in the bin because you call me a scumbag you think that all i care about is this i will discard this for a shot at that you elevate your title whilst kind of you know kind of shitting on the other title (laughs) um but they're not beyond that you know i don't think that'll happen now obviously it's been too long already although who knows i think they probably had to do it last week Yes, yeah. For it to have the oomph that it needed, it probably had to happen last week. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the whole situation, I think it's really interesting. I think there are a lot of ways that we can go with it. I think that the end game for CM Punk in 2024 is definitely Seth Rollins versus CM Punk at WrestleMania. Okay. I think that is the, the one that we're leading towards. Uh, it throws so much of our booking out the window because I would have said, if we had have said this, like, last week, I probably would have said LA Knight versus Seth Rollins. Yeah. But obviously now... Exactly I think what that we said match... on the last podcast, I'm looking at it on our notes right now, is this changes everything. Punk turning yeah. up yeah. has totally changed everything. And yeah. having Punk and Seth headline one night of WrestleMania actually gives those two both the thing that they have not had. Yeah. Neither of them have headlined WrestleMania, not counting Seth's cash end of the century. Yeah. Um, neither of them have ever headlined um, a one-on-one match. It's WrestleMania. And yeah. I think that in itself makes it a dope match. Like, it becomes uh, history then. Like, finally Punk gets his, um, his headlining of WrestleMania. Finally Seth gets it. Um, these two already have a story that Seth has been building up to with Punk literally since WWE backstage. I can't hold it in anymore. LA Knight, moment of the week, roll the clip! Let me talk to you! I have to say it. I have to say it. And I have to make a graphic for that now as well. <laughs> <laughs> Bollocks. But I have to say it. Okay. No LA Knight in the title picture right now, yep. which sucks. It does. But, but let's give LA Knight Logan Paul. I was just thinking that. I was going to say, like, we've, look, we've got the world title that's already, that we've already booked for Punk. You've got the universal title that... Better, better be going on the line with Cody. <laughs> Man, if you, Cody does not win that belt, I will be very upset. But LA Knight, the superstar, the megastar versus the social media megastar. 
they've got unfinished business like and that's the thing is is that it makes the most sense unless you get these returning superstars coming to play. Now, that is the other problem. We're kind of skipping a step here. We're going to go straight from one point to the other. The other monkey wrench in this situation is what if Stone Cold Steve Austin wants to play? Exactly. Now, and this one has been rumoured, um, Fightful Select uh, reported it earlier this week, that they haven't reported that it's happening. They have reported that there is talk within WWE of trying to make this happen if Punk wants it and if Austin wants it. It's only talk, but the talk is happening. And look, I don't think we've got long to make this match happen. I don't think we've got long left for Austin. No. Like, and that's the thing is, is that Punk at 45 could go another 10 years, you know, realistically but in speaking. Saying, in saying that, looking at his history over the last two years, he could injure himself in the next three months. Exactly right. So do you strike while the iron's hot? In which case, we could put LA Knight in a match with Seth Rollins for the championship, and I'd be happy with that. Or, you know, the other issue, which I was alluding to before, is what if you get the jabroni-beating, pie-eating rock wanting to come and play? Because then what do you do with the main event of WrestleMania? Do you give him Cody or do you give him the megastar? Do you do LA Knight versus The Rock in a showdown of You Stole My Gimmick? Yeah, and look, close your eyes and listen to that promo holy <laughs> crap honestly can you imagine the back and forth between the two of them you, look you're going to need subtitles so you're going to know which one's talking because because <laughs> they sound the same yeah. and that's the thing too because what about roman he's been we've been talking about this for like two years straight now yeah what about roman and what about Cody? One thing I've heard a lot of lately, and I think it was Tommy Dreamer that actually pitched it, and I really like it, but I also really hate it, is what about at the Rumble, it's Cody and Punk and somebody, maybe The Rock in the ring, and Randy Orton. And Randy Orton just screws Cody yep. out of the shot. And then he's like, let's talk about this for a second. I'm your mentor. You know, you look up to me. You, you, I give you everything. But was I'm not done. I'm not done being the viper. I uh, yeah. Look, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. I've been saying it for a while. Is I don't think the story ends. I think hard times are going to go for a while. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets screwed out of the title shot. Like he lost the title match last year. I think you, if you're not going to put the belt on him at Mania this year, then you have to not have him in that match. Right? But, okay, but Jesus f***ing Christ, and I'm going to censor that later, but Jesus f***ing Christ, if you don't have him win the belt at WrestleMania, he needs to win the belt like a pay-per-view afterwards. Yeah, it needs to be at SummerSlam or something, right? Yeah, like it has to be in 2024 or he's done. Yeah, yeah. I would have argued before Punk come back that he would have been done if it didn't happen at WrestleMania. In fact, I have argued that on this podcast. Yeah. That if it didn't happen at Mania, Cody's project, we're finished. That's it. We're done. Look, the only way that you can do this is you screw him out before so he doesn't get the match. And then you j you literally have to ramp up the hard times, right? Like you just need to be putting more and more and more adversity into him until he's just like, I need this match. I need this match, not just because I need to finish the story, but I need to break this bad streak. And I'm not waiting till WrestleMania. Well, we all know that Dusty was never averse to including real personal stuff into his life, right? Mm -hmm. Into the wrestling gimmick. Have Brandy leave him. Bro. Ha like, like, you know, something like that. Give him hard times. Like take away times. everything. Yeah. And but, look, like, take I... away everything. Oh, okay. So this one here is going to be... If, you, if you're triggered by bad things happening to animals, you might want to pause this bit for a minute or skip. But I do know the dog is getting on. 
Okay. Are we talking uh, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy situation here? What I'm talking here is we go full hard times, right? So he misses the title shot. Brandy leaves him. The dog dies. Uh, Like, I'm talking like full hard times, like nothing goes right for Cody. And essentially it gets to, I need this. I need this. Yeah. I'm not waiting till WrestleMania. I need to finish the story. Yeah. Yeah, it's consuming his life. And that's why Brandy says, look, we need some space. And then you could almost have the um, Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth moment at the end of that match. Yeah, exactly right. Like, like, like everything gets better once he wins the belt. Yeah. Like, instantly. Yeah. Somehow the dog resurrects, everything's fine. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, no, I think that... Okay, so look, I don't love the pitch. I don't, I'm going to say. <laughs> I, don't, I don't love the pitch in general because I think that the story has to end at Mania okay. and I think it has to be Cody who but, beats Roman. But this is the thing that we're finding ourselves in at the moment is we literally... Are probably in the most unpredictable build up to WrestleMania that I think we have had in my entire time of watching WrestleMania. Literally watching. anything can happen. Like, yeah. literally yeah. anything can happen and from now till the then. The only equation that has changed in this is CM Punk. And it, him coming in has completely uprooted everything that we thought was going to happen. Oh, no, but he doesn't move the needle fit. No, he doesn't move the needle 29. No, he doesn't change the culture of wrestling. (laughs) No, no, he doesn't. We'll fire him for Jungle Boy. Yeah, yeah. The devil. I mean, what? What? (laughs) Man, I just, yeah, look, the thing is, is that we're in the most uncharted waters we've been in for years. That's exciting. Like, it's really exciting, but I can't give you the answers. Usually, I'm pretty good at this. Like, yeah. usually, I've th- got a pretty good idea. So, what you're saying is, when they think you've got the answers, WWE changes the question. When you think you've got the answers, we hired CM Punk back, and now everything's different. Yeah. Like, <laughs> because that's what it is. Like, yeah. ultimately, at the end of the day, you bring Randy Orton back, nothing changes. Correct at all like maybe you have him and Seth feud until mania yeah and you know upper upper mid card good spot for randy this stage awesome of his yeah awesome and look give him a run put him put him with seth put the belt on him yep. i'm fine with all of that Absolutely. but nothing really changes what has changed the culture of professional wrestling is cm punk yep. again again like love him or hate him we have had nothing but the weirdest and i mean the weirdest comments man i mean you guys is weird like oh, the dude. weirdest comments on tiktok on youtube everywhere uh i've heard every excuse under the book for why cm punk is a piece of shit uh, but man he can't you can't deny it you cannot deny it at this point yeah yeah 100 percent um and so with the austin rumor are you excited yes. for this potentially? I am. I have the stiffy any time I hear glass shatters. Yeah. Like any time that glass breaks, I got to put a prophylactic on because, man, that guy, everything that he does in wrestling is magical. If you go back and watch anything of Austin, and I mean almost anything, anything Oof. from his run on top of the ta- of the table man this guy every single reaction he ever came out to is 10 times louder than almost everything we've heard since i've got a pitch for you oh your turn let's yeah. go i've got a pitch for you like oh, you were talking and i got a shiver down my spine as i thought of this perth february 2014 <sighs> We have the end of the chamber. CM Punk does not win. But we have a moment where CM Punk has been a piece of shit for the last couple of months. um, And he starts losing it. Right? Like he's grabbing people and he's knocking over monitors into people and all this sort of thing. And in Perth, up to stadium, the glass shatters. 
And we get Austin <laughs> come out and basically say, I've seen it, I've had enough. And we build Domania from there. Because <sighs> it's a PLE. That's the thing. Is is we're not having like a regular wrestling show here in Perth. This is Elimination Chamber, which means literally anything canon. can happen. This like is, this is could, canon. Yeah, we could get Austin. We're definitely getting Punk. Yeah, which excites yeah. me already. Yeah, um, we could potentially get Rock. Mm hmm. Like, like literally, we could a get month Austin. out from Mania. We could get Cena. I doubt we'll get Cena. Cena's still hurt. Yeah. Like, he's still recovering from surgery. Yeah. But, remember the last time he was still recovering from surgery and came back, like, six months early? Well, also, remember that time he was filming a movie and decided to turn up at uh, an event in London. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, the thing is, is that, again, uncertain times, man. Like, it could happen. Stone Cold Steve Austin showing up here would be wild. Like... Oh, but man it's like do you waste it on Perth you know <laughs> that's kind of well, my this thing is the thing is WWE with their new strategy of PLEs by doing all of these events in different countries because they know they're getting a bigger show by going to these other countries coming to Perth going to the UK um, they're now going to Germany and France um, when they uh, did Puerto Rico they're getting more wild rabbit crowds so while Austin gets an explosive reaction anywhere he would come out, I think the reaction he gets in Perth... Yeah, huge, massive. Because we never got him. No, no, I think... Yeah, I think you're right in a lot of ways with that. Um, but then again, my, my that throws My everything. booking is loose, but... <laughs> yeah, that throws everything out the window because yeah. then you have Punk and Austin at Mania, which... They do not have, at this point in time, there's no big marquee Undertaker match, right? Oh. There's nothing special here. I do possibly think if we don't get LA Knight versus uh, Logan Paul, we will probably get Logan... No, yeah, Logan Paul versus Bad Bunny. That is the, like, the marquee match that I can think of that will make enough sense in yeah. my eyes. I'm not sure if Bad Bunny gets a pop in Australia. Oh, I think Bad Bunny will get a pot anywhere in the world. The thing is, is that you think about, like, following and how, like, massive the concerts are everywhere in the world yeah. that Bad Bunny does it. I think that maybe those are a little bit of the old um, uh, next-generation glasses that you're wearing right now because I think that the reality of the situation is is that if you put Logan Paul and Bad Bunny in a match at WrestleMania, it's probably going to do really big numbers. The thing is, right? I wondered whether it was old person fit when it came to Bad Bunny. But mm -hmm. my son, who is 21, and I've got a son yep. who's 17, neither of them know, knew who Bad Bunny was. As a wrestling fan, I was the one who introduced them to Bad Bunny. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, so there you go. There's another point. And look, to the point of it as well, and they're both Logan Paul... Fans, so. Oh, they should know, right? Yeah. Now, Logan Paul since arriving in WWE hasn't really moved their social media numbers like no. the little the little spots and the YouTube clips and everything where Logan Paul's in them hasn't brought a bunch of new fans along because they're Logan Paul fans no they they where they get the viewership and the um views is outside of their own content it's on Logan's content right the yes it's not impulsive yeah yeah, and that's the thing. So whilst I think that it's probably a big match, is it a marquee match for the show? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. So you still need one. And then if you need one, is there a bigger one than CM Punk versus Stone Cold Steve Austin? It might be LA Knight versus The Rock, but it's not going to be as big as Stone Cold versus Punk. Yeah. And look, I think if you bring The Rock back, it has to be The Rock versus Roman. I think that's the story that they need to tell is you over the next three months have the bloodline further disintegrate and the rock basically come in and say you're not the head of the table I'm the head of the table he I've needs to do that before table. rumble though like, or, like, or, like or at rumble it needs to build from January yeah 
if you want to give it the air it needs to breathe, it needs to happen. I don't want it to happen at Elimination Chamber. Yeah. WrestleMania like builds should happen six months in advance. Yeah, agreed. In a perfect world, they should start at like Survivor Series. Yeah. And look, I think that's exactly what we're seeing now, as we're starting to see some stuff happening. Um... Well, yeah, if you look at it objectively, we've, we've started Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns, even though it's been going for 100 years, we've effectively started that now. Yeah. We've and started Punk and Rollins essentially, now. Essentially, the moment Punk turned up is the road to WrestleMania has begun. Yes. Like yeah. we, so, the official road to WrestleMania starts at the Rumble, but we have started. That's it. So yeah. from here... What do we do? Do we discount any of that? I don't think we can. I think we have to really take that into consideration. So I would be shocked, shocked, I say, if we got Punk and Austin at WrestleMania. Oh, same. I'd be shocked. Happy, but shocked. Yeah. I would be shocked if the card for WrestleMania wasn't CM Punk versus Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship and Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship night too. Yeah. I think that's how it goes. Night one main event, Punk. Night two main event, Roman. And look, uh, like the idea of LA Knight versus... Um, Logan Paul. Logan Paul. Yeah, I love it. Or, or what do we... You know, we can put Gunther in there as well, really. Although Gunther and LA Knight, I just don't feel like it meshes the same. No. Nah, no. Nah. I think Gunther is a good opening belt for WrestleMania. And... A good, you know, first match of the night. Him and Sheamus. Him and Sheamus, yeah. Just because Sheamus is coming back. Chop fist. Yep. Look, and look, they can run that back. Give Sheamus that belt at WrestleMania. Yeah, do it. And make him a Grand Slam champion. And give him that belt at Mania. That's awesome. Yep. I'm for that. That's my booking right now. I want the, that. And that's a great way to start the show, right? Cause yeah, because that's awesome. Cause... You always want to start WrestleMania on a high. Everyone knows the story too. Everyone yeah. knows Seamus' deal. They're all in for it. I reckon that's a good way to start the night. Uh, from there, obviously, we need to build into other things in the future because there are so many other people who probably need to get their eyes around that title shot as well. Chad Gable comes to mind instantly. Uh, but, yeah, I think that that's probably the match that I would be most interested in seeing. Do you know what I'm curious about? I'm curious to know what the viewers and the listeners think of this booking so now that we're on youtube in the comments let us know how you're going to book them yes uh, give us your full card i yeah. want your wrestlemania card yeah uh or uh, if you're listening to the uh, podcast uh, hit us up on twitter dwn under the ring before we go any further this show is brought to you by og nerd og nerd represents the gamers the cosplayers the collectors the model makers the tattooists the artists and the athletes they are not just a clothing brand they are a subculture og nerd revel in their halcyon youth and embrace the lifestyle driven by nostalgia humble beginnings and heroes og nerd strives to offer quality comfortable and above all stylish streetwear apparel inspired by a lifetime of gaming music and street art i've worked with og nerd for many years and find their apparel second to none in terms of quality and appearance whether it's at a wrestling show or a convention you'll be hard pressed to find a better armor for your rig get yours at ognerdlife.com All right, on to some AEW. Um, this week, I've actually spent some time watching AEW. I've watched both Collision and Dynamite this week, which if you've listened to our previous episodes, I've been struggling to keep up with AEW. And yeah. AEW fanboy, I am the mark for AEW. But I was very curious to watch this week because I did genuinely feel like after Punk's return, AEW needed to... Do something. Yes. Uh, I don't think necessarily it needed to be a response to Punk directly, but they needed to do something to become more interesting again, right? Because mm -hmm. essentially all the all attention is on uh, WWE right now. Uh, they haven't really recovered from um, All In, um, so I was very interested to see how it was. One first thing i will say is both shows were actually really good shows 
Yes. But the biggest thing that I did notice is they seem to have they seem to be going back to sort of their roots. And I, this, I'm curious if anyone who's listening agrees with this from viewing it, but I felt like a lot of the focus in both shows this week was actually on the young up and comers, the AEW home growers, or the day oneers, right? Um, with because Moxley, while well, not AEW homegrown, is a day one AEW guy. Um, yeah. So, and I felt like they were leaning heavily on those guys. Like you've definitely got Adam Copeland and Christian doing their thing, which is getting interesting finally to me. Um, but I would say ninety percent of both the shows combined would have been um, up and comers and AEW guys. And yep. it actually felt super refreshing as a guy who has watched AEW for the last four years, three years, however long it's been going. Um, it felt like it's starting to get that vibe back of I'm seeing new faces, fresh faces. They're leaning on their own characters. And there's not so much of a reliance on WWE old timers uh, and not such a reliance <laughs> on taking digs at wwe yes until of course you get to rick flair telling all 18 to 25 year olds to meet him in the hotel room oh that was cut from the show also that yes. was on rampage so it doesn't count <laughs> Yeah, look, I totally agree with you. We're seeing an influx of that homegrown talent of the younger guys getting their shine, getting their spotlight. It probably doesn't hurt that Paul White got hurt, so the Big yeah. Show stuff would have been cut. Uh, it probably doesn't hurt that they cut Ric Flair from the show and probably the world. Yep. And, and, and uh, you and know, Rick's also put his hand up and said he'll walk away from AEW if that's what we want. And yes. all of us said, yes, please. Yes. He won't yeah, do so it. we'll see he if that happens. It. He doesn't, no, he doesn't no. know how to walk away from money. No, no, all wrestling, honestly. Yeah. So that's the thing. But I think that you're right. I think that we're seeing a lot of good stuff coming through. The devil questions keep popping up. Uh, I'm interested to see what your take is on got that. Way more interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. It's got way more interesting. It was probably the only. There's two moments where they sort of alluded to CM Punk this week. One was before the devil emerged on Dynamite, which was we had MJF cutting a promo, he mentioned punk, right? No problem. But when the devil turned up uh, after his promo, they did this <coughs> static thing. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a static thing, yeah. And I was like, mm, you didn't have to do that. No, that was just silly. I Okay, I'm of two minds with the devil thing. I think that it can be only two people. Okay, who's your two people? Because I had a thought. Yes, my two people are Samoa Joe. Okay. Because he's always the one to help. Mm -hmm. And in from my world, my perspective, when we were doing the solution gimmick, it was always Davis Storm defending EPW, and it wasn't until the turn came that you realised that he was working everyone all along. Yeah. The other one is MJF. You think it's MJF this whole time? I think it's him this whole time. I think that he got so scared about losing the belt that he has fabricated this entire thing. Those are my two pitches. Okay. So I think that it would be compelling. I think that it would be compelling because it's given Adam Cole this whole, like, reason to care more uh. about it. You know, you think he might be scared to lose his friend and scared to lose his belt, and I like that. I, I think that there is something in that. There is something in that because my other one was this whole thing started. The devil thing started with CM Punk, right? This show, everything comes back to Punk. <laughs> yes, like everything, everything. But there's one outlier who he's doing stuff at the moment on the show. But he's not doing anything on the show, if you know what I mean. Yes. And uh, it's Ricky Starks. Yeah, look. And he's and the what only a boon person, for someone like Ricky Starks. Right? But also, he's the only person connected to Punk in his final run 
that hasn't done anything huge since Punk left. Like he's doing this whole the tag title thing, but it's not interesting. It's just yes. I feel like the tag title reign with him could actually almost be a red herring for it being. I just had two ideas. Okay, <laughs> give me your ideas. Okay, one of them's really dumb. Okay. One of them is really dumb, look, and it might I, make me forget the other I one. Think, I think my one was kind of dumb as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't remember one of them. Oh, no, it left me. But, okay, no, I did. I remember. Okay, so, <laughs> pitch one. It's Colt Cabana. <laughs> look, if we can have Colt have a good run, <laughs> it, would, it would probably be Colt's final good run. But, yeah, of course. But I don't think Colt hasn't had a run in AEW. No, no, so it wouldn't make any sense. I just thought it would be hilarious. Oh, yeah. My, <laughs> it's kind of catty, and I kind of feel like they could be catty enough for it. Yeah. The other one, which is almost as stupid, what if it's the Jericho Appreciation Society <laughs> reforming time. under Jericho the whole time, and it's been a coup for Jericho to get back the championship? It's silly. But it's the right sort of silly. <laughs> it is. It is. Because it could be Jericho. But look, this is the thing. MJF <laughs> and the devil storyline and also um, the Samoa Joe stuff and also uh, the Wardlow stuff is getting interesting, right? So, And it's all leaning on AEW guys. Right, but here's the thing. All right, here's the thing. My thing about the MJF booking, the serious booking, mm -hmm. is the other side of it is what if the pinnacle has been reformed under our noses the whole time? Because one of those guys under the devil gimmick is very clearly Wardlow. Yeah, and one of those guys from the pinnacle hasn't been seen for a while too. It could really easily be MJF is doing the promos on a pre-tape as the devil and Everyone else in that ring is FTR, Sean is Spears. Wardlow, and is Sean Spears. 100%. That, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. Like, if you have it, essentially you could, because they're fighting um, this weekend, right? This week. On yes. Dynamite. Yeah. Essentially, have the devil and his minions just beat the living snot out of Samoa Joe. So Samoa Joe is the one going injured into World's End. Yes. Yep. And then it all happens from there. And then you have the final moment when everyone is standing in the ring, and MJF is cornered and scared, and then they just pull the masks off, and it's the pinnacle. And yeah. And then you have them go to go in and beat him and give him a hug. Yeah, and that's it. It would get FTR something to do because, man, after the punk thing, they need something here. If they're sticking around, that's the thing. Yeah. I think all jokes aside about Chris Jericho, I think it's the pinnacle. I and think you, it's been can, them. And you can do the pinnacle without Jericho. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But the, but the jokes about it being the Jericho Appreciation Society is something yeah. I mean. Like, like, because obviously it's not that. That's just us being silly. But I think it could be the pinnacle. And then what happens then? Because you've got the kingdom on one side, you've got the pinnacle on the other side, because Adam Cole has been having all those talks, you know. Hey, man, come over, check out your neck, you know. Even though you've got a sore foot, come and check yeah. out your neck. You know, <laughs> you've got that whole thing going on in the background. Got some good it could lead to stable a stable warfare. It, yeah, it could lead to a huge stable war, and that'd be kind of cool because then the best friends in the entire world, that's over. Yeah. Like, there could be moments in the matches where they like go hit each other, but they can't. Yeah. And then someone else takes them out from the other side. But can you imagine they tease that for the whole match, and then they get to a point where they look like they're working together, and then Max just turns around and boofs him right in the dick. I like it. Book it, Tony. Book it. Wait a second, I'll just flick my text. Yeah, go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's my AEW thoughts. I don't know if there's much else in the AEW thing no. to go with, but... 
Okay, cool. Let's move on to Aussie wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Australian wrestling. So uh, if you're new to the show and you're watching us on YouTube, what we do every single week is we uh, talk a lot about uh, pro wrestling on WWE and AEW, but then we like to finish things off by giving some love to... Uh, wrestling companies around Australia and New Zealand and uh, let you know where you can go and see some awesome wrestling shows in your region starting off in Padstow in New South Wales just south of Sydney uh, they've got All Star Pro Wrestling Australia they've got their Christmas Carnage 2 event happening on the 16th of December then over in Melbourne we've got MCW they've got their end game event happening 10th of December at Thornbury Theatre and then here in Perth, a huge, huge show coming up. We've got EPW Reawakening in December 16th at Willerton Stadium. On top of that, heading into the new year, we've got Dude Where's My Ring for a two-show gimmick, a February 23rd and 24th at the seasonal. Going to be violent, going to be brutal if that's your cup of tea. Get around that. And then we've got the EPW Aussie Wrestling Super Show, February 23rd, as well at Williton Stadium. It's going to feature superstars from all over the country. And look, if you're wondering why so much stuff is happening in Perth in February, it's because we've also got, of course, WWE. They've got their huge PLE. It's happening at Optus Stadium, an elimination chamber on February the 21st. And Look, man, all roads lead to WWE right now, and all shows all over the country are prepping for WWE coming. Did you know Bret Hart's going to be in my hometown? Also, by the way, what the f you got with Ballarat? Why are you hating my, my hometown for? Look, I, we do not get into politics on this show, so I am not <laughs> going to get into why I said what I said. Or, uh, I'm, not even, no, I'm not even going to refer to it. But, dude, Ballarat... I had no interest in ever going to Ballarat because I didn't even know where it was three days ago. Yes. Um, but, yeah, we've got um, the StarCast Festival happening in Ballarat. In Ballarat! Ballarat. And we've got Mickey James coming. And the best there ever was, the best there ever will be, Bret Hart is coming to Ballarat. It's crazy. Man, i got to tell you, Jim Ray is my mate. He's so excited. He's the biggest Bret Hart mark in the universe. So it's excellent. I fully expect him to just be his chauffeur for the month. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but no. Look, and this has just put something else on our calendar. Um, yes. That we need to try and get to this year because I think we need to do... Look, Twitter has actually asked us to do this. There's two things we've been asked to do. One is a live podcast in Perth. Yes. Uh, and the other one is a live podcast from StarCast. So mm -hmm. we have to see if we can make either or both of those things happen. Uh, Look, so if you I'm want it king. to happen, tweet StarCast, tweet uh, Oceanic Pro Wrestling, uh, tweet WWE, tell them that you want us there. And look, look, if you want us to do a live podcast from any of those places, man, just let us know, all right? We'll do our very best to sort it out. You're buying the drinks. 100%. Because <laughs> we're going to be spending a lot of money on flights to get there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But thank you. Hey, this has been weird. It's been good. I still don't have the right stuff that I want yet, but I think you guys will appreciate it anyway. Hopefully it's come out all right. Hey, future Shippy, hopefully you did a good job of editing this. I hope you did, because if not, <laughs> it's going to suck. Um, but yeah, that's another week of pro wrestling for us, our opinions at the very least. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Yes, that's right. Look at me. Mm. Look at me right in the eyes. Go and do it. Look at me. I dare you. Double dog dare you. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, we'll see you down under the ring. It's weird that I can wave, wave goodbye at the end of the show now. Uh.